beautiful people of Tibet. Thank you for having me. What I want to talk about is authenticity and the power of you. So just making the most of you and discovering you, discovering your identity and taking advantage of that and, uh, you know, making it a career if possible. So let's talk about the word authentic. What it means is not a copy. It means to be absolutely genuine. And I'd like to kind of explore that process of finding out the real kind of you know, the real you, all the things that you love the most. And in this world where we kind of Snapchat all the time, we Instagram and we Twitter, and you can put out any sort of idealized version of who you want to be. You know, you can filter the photos, you can grade, you can uh, only put up pictures of you when you're with all your friends or when you've just had your makeup done or when you're just going out. Um, and you can kind of make your life seem to be this amazing, interesting, brilliant journey, you know, rather than the reality of it, which is sometimes really mundane and boring and a bit sad sometimes, you know, that, that's the honest thing. You know, everyone goes through ups and downs. So I guess it's that whole thing of why be you? Why try and kind of be really honest and truthful about your life and be honest and truthful about who you are? And I think... What I think is that genuinely, if you are able to do that, if you're able to tune into who you are, you can be so successful. You can be so happy and you can be really, really free as a person. Let's talk about some examples of people that I think are great at being them. So Alan Carr is the example of a comedian who no one else could be Alan Carr apart from Alan Carr. Do you know what I mean? He is just 100% himself. He's embraced who he is and there's no one else out there like him. And I think that's a, one of the big reasons of his likability is that he's comfortable in his own skin and that shows through in every way. Adele, this is another lady that I think is someone who hasn't traditionally conformed to the rules of what is deemed, you know, acceptable as a pop star. She's kind of an average weight. She hasn't had loads of plastic surgery. She talks and kind of gabbles nervously between her songs and that's one of the most endearing and lovely things about her as a pop star is her humanity, her realness. And then lastly, we have uh, Lethal Bizzle. I like him because he is, he's just bonkers. Again, through the power of Snapchat, he's kind of come alive and I'm in more invested in him as an artist because I know that he's so bonkers and he has his own language, he has his own words, he has his own way of talking about life and um, it's really addictive. So those are an example of people that I think have kind of done a really good job of embracing who they are, embracing their personality and making a career out of it. So uh, what is authentic for me? Well, I guess in my career uh, trajectory, there's been a few points where I have made decisions that now when I look back at in hindsight have really, um, you know, benefited me because they're decisions that I made based on doing something that I love. Um, for instance, when I was 18 and in Queen's University in Belfast and loving life, and uh, I went to uni because I felt I should go to uni, by the way. I was, it was kind of part of what I thought I should do. Um, I don't know in retrospect whether it was the right thing for me to do. It taught me a lot of things like how to rave and um, how to live independently, how to work a washing machine. I'm not sure whether the education aspect did a lot for me, but it gave me time, I suppose, to grow and it gave me time to think about who I was as a person. Um, and yeah, I did kind of think, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do with my life? You know, I was on the dole, I was going clubbing every weekend. This is the kind of final summer of the, of the uni. And uh, I kind of thought, right, what are the things that make me the most fulfilled? What are the things that make me the most happy as a person right now in my life? And those things were talking, socializing, chatting, um, music, discovering music, buying music, DJing. And I put them together and <laughs> I got radio. You know, it was a very simple equation, but that is what I got. And that is literally how I decided that I would try and pursue a career in radio. But then I, I got a show on Radio One about um, kind of six years later. And similarly, another decision that I made just after that has been really, really pivotal in terms of, you know, where I am now. And that was a decision that was, it wasn't based on anything apart from um, on, on just the fact that I was kind of not having a great time doing a specific thing. And that thing was DJing. So 
I got given this Radio 1 show, right, which was amazing. It was my dream come true. And then off the back of that show, I got DJ gigs. And DJing is something that I'd always done. I DJed at house parties and that kind of thing. But I'd not been put in front of an audience and asked to, you know, entertain that audience, beat matching and, you know, DJing all this electronic music. So it was terrifying. But it was also really, really lonely. And that was something that I hadn't predicted because I was, I was doing these tours on my own around North America, which was really exciting. I didn't have a tour manager. I was kind of arriving at Philadelphia airport with my bag on my back, kind of praying that I'd see a promoter. And then when I wouldn't, my heart would sink. I'd be like, God, now I've got to call him. I don't know where I'm going. And it was all kind of really exciting, but also terrifying at the same time. And there would be so many situations where I'd be kind of coming home on trains from Newcastle on a Sunday afternoon or whatever. And I'd be like, God, I wish I just had some you know, some, some friends or some pals with me. Because uh, after a while, with, with your pals, the kind of the DJing thing wears off because they have a life and they have jobs and they can't stay out late, so they have to kind of get on with their lives. So for a while, my friends came with me and then they were like, you, you go and do your thing. So I said to my agent at the time, I was like, listen, can't we figure out a way to get some people with me on the road? Like, why don't we, why don't we bring other DJs? And that very basic thing was the, the birth of the brands that I that I do now, which is called Animat Presents, which is me basically presenting lineups of DJs and artists and curating lineups, um, lineups of which I am part of. That started in Fabric Nightclub in room three in 2007. And, you know, nine years later, we are kind of doing events all over the world and compilations. And we have our own festival now in Malta. So it's kind of worked out really, really well. Um, and. I guess it was all based on that one fundamental decision, which was like, how do I make this more fun? <laughs> um, and yeah, that was a decision at the time that I didn't realize would kind of turn into something so big. So those two things, the kind of sitting down and figuring out what made me happy, how could I make myself personally happier, really worked out really well for me in those two ways. I know as a young person, it's so hard figuring out who you are. And I also know that you're in situations so often where it's easier just to kind of fit into the mold. Like all those people I showed you on the television, they're very exaggerated versions of personalities. And you don't have to be wacky and wild and bonkers to succeed. It's more just about having a self-awareness and a knowledge of who you are and, and, and what makes you happy. That, that is what I'm saying is really important. Um, so if you're not sure about what you want to do for your career or what you want to do with your life, um, and you don't have to have a predetermined career, by the way. I mean, I think a lot of people think, God, I, I need to know what I'm going to do. I have to be a doctor. I've got to be a lawyer. It's just not the case. You know, you may end up doing 20 different things in your life as, you know, as a career, and that's all okay. Um, but one, a good place to start is just thinking about what makes you happy, what makes you most fulfilled. You know, it could be that the thing that makes you most happy is going running, the feeling after you get, you know, you get after you do exercise, or maybe you love being with your pet dog, maybe you love art, maybe you love bossing people about and planning things. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, an, abs an absolute kind of clear job description. It could just be a thing that can then turn into, you know, being a fitness instructor or being a vet or, you know, being a PR person. There's so many things that you can do. But all I know is that if you base what you want to do with your life on personal fulfillment, on stuff that makes you happy, you are going to be so much better at it. You are going to shine at it. You're not going to take a sickie on a day doing a job that you love because you want to go to work. It doesn't feel like a job. It feels like the most fun and brilliant and inspiring thing in the world. And that's another thing, uh, reason why Radio 1 is such a good place because I love working there because it invests in personalities. It invests in people being who they are, as mad and as bonkers and as wonderful as they can be. Um, and I feel, yeah, very inspired to work there. I guess to conclude, all I would say is there is no one on this earth that is you. And that is the one gift you are given. You are given a gift of complete uniqueness. No one has the same makeup in their brain or in their biology as you. And try and celebrate it. Try and make the most of who you are. And I think you will succeed. Thank you very much. Thank you.